Hello and welcome to another episode of the Limbs Praxis podcast, where we talk about the good life, the responsible life and the life of the practitioner. This is Josef Barz here speaking and I want to thank the sponsors of this show, which is you. There's no company, no uh, supplement company, <laughs> like in many podcasts that is sponsoring this show. No, I'm doing this because I have a little bit of available time through the money that I receive from people over Patreon, but of course also through the people that buy my courses, my uh, that do my coaching, my workshops, and so on. You allow me to sit down here and record this for all of you. Yeah, so. If that speaks to you, you can consider becoming a sponsor, a producer of the show, you could even say. And for that, the easiest way is to become a Patreon member. Today I will talk about something that I briefly introduced or that I pitched, you could say, in a recent newsletter. And just let me say one thing about the newsletter, because the year 2023 now, I... Mm, let's say, in a sense, restarted the newsletter before I was just sending out a newsletter here and there. And now what I'm doing is I'm sending a newsletter out every Wednesday and I very carefully craft it. Yeah? I sit there for several hours, writing it, making it, and with the goal of sending a good newsletter to all of you. So in this newsletter, you have some uh, of my thoughts, or things that I'm doing at the moment. I share some stuff like music that I like to listen to, uh, maybe equipment that I'm using, asking some questions to you where you can help me or provide me with some, help me with some information. Yeah, I want to be in contact with my community, provide uh, a question for reflection also and of course also inform you about things like workshops but that, that's i would say the smallest part of it so in that sense it's really not an advertising newsletter that there are so many out there like this but is i would say a small a small weekly read to sit down with with a cup of tea Good, and you can sign up on the newsletter uh, to the newsletter on the website, or I will also put a link in wherever you are listening to this. And in a recent newsletter, I asked, "Is our health insurance making us sick?" I was in a bit of a, how do I say, provocative mode. So what I was thinking about there openly was if you pay 900 euros per month for the health insurance so this, this would be the max payment in the state health insurance it's not really the correct word state health insurance but we have two types here in germany doesn't matter yeah so that would be the max payment and let's say it's around 90 percent i don't want to bore you with the calculations then the question that came up for me is if you would use some of this money, I mean, in in, um, in the newsletter, I asked what if you have 900 euros a month for prevention for your health, what would happen? How could you use that? Obviously, it's completely unrealistic because it makes a lot of sense to have an insurance in case something very bad is happening to you and the costs are uh, tremendously high. But notice, because some of some guys wrote to me, yeah, uh, for me, the insurance, it makes a lot of sense to have insurance because I recently had something with my knee and I got treatment for it, blah, 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 blah. I think what many people don't realize that the health insurance is not for that because these costs are not so high, you know? Because if you are a relatively reasonable person, you can just put money to the side and for this eventualities or for going to the doctor you just pay that but what the health insurance is powerful about is if anything really bad happens yeah if something happens where suddenly 
you need to do a treatment that it costs 200,000 euros or 500,000 euros. This is what the insurance is doing. And it's the same with car insurance, by the way. You know, if you uh, have a car accident once or twice in your life and the cost of that is 10,000 euros, then for that you don't need to have a car health insurance. Yeah, you understand? You would just put some money on the side and have it for all sorts of eventualities or so your health or your car and so on and so forth. Why do we have a car a car insurance? We have a car insurance because it can also happen that you create a damage that is 10 million euro and for that you need an insurance. So the insurances are not about the small stuff. So I was asking in this provocative way what would happen if you had this money for prevention because as a matter of fact, at least in Germany, there's very little prevention built into the system. And actually after I wrote this, I also um, wrote with my health insurance and asked them about the possibilities of prevention and what they told me is that I can go to some courses that they sponsor. I think there's some yoga and similar things okay yeah in a sense why not it's not definitely not what i would search for personally because um, yeah as you know i don't need to go to your course i know how to do such things and in a sense i really don't need my health insurance to uh, pay for any prevention because i would rather have that money and choose by myself what i want to do with it and not have this in-between thing and as a matter of fact i got many replies to my newsletter i think the most replies i ever got to anything that i wrote uh, to a newsletter in a newsletter and there was quite a little bit of talk about solidarity also and there's several sides to this the thing is i don't want to talk too political here because I want to talk about practicing and the philosophy behind it and also self-responsibility which you could say is already a political thing the idea about self-responsibility I try to sort of ignore that fact and do my best to keep uh, this podcast political very plain I think maybe I'm failing a bit at it with already talking about things like self-responsibility but let me briefly say that I, of course, full-heartedly believe that if we come into this world with different possibilities, yeah, uh, and especially when children come into this world and they need help, I think it's very, very wonderful that as a powerful society, we can do this, we can provide this help and no matter in that sense what um, the economic and social standing of the parents is through this state health insurance that is treating everyone the same when they get treated. So I don't want to talk about this layer where there are things that you cannot do anything about like things that you're born with and this stuff i want to talk about the layer of lifestyle and personal choices because i think this is something where we can inquire about together and i am very very thankful for the replies that i got because it uh, uh, what happened is a big important thing for me came up in my mind thinking about all the responses that I got and something came up that it will be now for from now on and it already is something I will very regularly talk about <clears throat> which is facing consequences is another side of the self-responsibility so here's the thing Imagine the consequences of your choices and the full consequences. And imagine these consequences without being belayed on a rope. What does it mean? 
It means in our society we have, fortunately, you can say, yes, all sorts of ropes or nets, safeties, you know, like our medical system or our uh, social security system. But imagine for a moment that none of this exists. There's no social security. There's no health insurance. Maybe there's still hospitals and stuff like this. Yeah, so in a sense, privately organized. Uh, but it's not from the state. Like it's not automatic that you can use them. It's through your choices if you will be treated in a hospital or not. What does that do with you? If you think about your choices, how you eat, how you live your life, and go a little bit further, imagine there's no medicine. There's no medicine, there's no doctors, there's no hospitals, nothing of this. What does it do with you? Maybe a little bit of anxiety creeping up, but maybe also in a good way, because to face the consequences of your actions, I think there can be there can be putting things a lot into perspective. Because isn't it that we are sometimes leaning a little bit into these systems, smoking and drinking, knowing that there is doctors, there's pills, there's medicines not moving and taking painkillers because they're there instead of taking care of that. And you know what I find pretty weird about the system of the health insurance is if you have a bad lifestyle, yeah, like smoking, drinking a lot, and taking drugs, not moving, not sleeping enough, having little social positive contact, blah, 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 eating, obviously also not eating well, all this stuff, then actually potentially you are benefiting more from the system. Because if you're more sick and uh, everyone gets treated the same, you take more out of the system. And that's actually something to think about for a moment. Hmm. How much do I want to take out of the system? Because as I said, isn't it great that we are, that we can pool people, like we can come together and say, hey, we are all paying in this pool. And if something very bad happens to us, then we pay that from the pool. So if I have a car accident that turns very bad and it's like 1 million euro that was uh, the cost that was created and then this is paid from the pool but on the other hand imagine you have no car insurance but it's the same risk now so it's the same thing you drive and what can happen is that you create an accident and it's 10 million euros yeah? how would you drive now how would you approach that? I think it's very good to be insured against this stuff. I like that I have a car insurance that insures me against yeah, something very bad happening. But at the same time, I don't want to drive like that. I want to drive in a way that I assume I have no insurance. I have no insurance that pays uh, for when I break something but also no insurance that pays for my car if i break something on my car you know and it's also nice that you can go into the mountains and if something very bad happens there there can be a, a helicopter taking you out but you should never go into the mountains with that assumption that okay if something bad happens i will be rescued if you go into the mountains from my opinion you should always go with no one will come to save you because then you will prepare differently and of course if you then need help you call help but you don't go into the mountains already with the assumption that there is the possibility to call help no you go with the assumption of i'm 
in a sense, on my own or with the people that I go there. We are taking care of each other and we are uh, moving there self-responsible. Because I think I have a little bit of a disgust for um, for the sluggishness of what such systems can create. And the cost for health insurance will just go up through time. On the one hand, because our society is not really getting better at prevention, in a sense of people are not moving more or eating better or something like this, like society as a whole. But at the same time, we invent more and more costly treatments. So it is likely that the price for health insurance goes up. And now another thing in Western society that we face is there's more and more older people and less younger people. So if you have a health insurance that is working similar to the private um, retirement fund where the people that are young, the people that are working, pay for the people that are currently receiving retirement, then if you are old now, let's say you're now 60 years old, yeah, and you are exactly in this bracket of uh, a huge bunch of people that will start to retire, that will start to become old, you actually need to realize you have to follow a healthy lifestyle because there will be so many other old people and the likelihood that the system will not let's say perfectly be able to deal with that is actually high so from that perspective if we talk about solidarity i think this is where solidarity also lies to take care of yourself properly especially in that case where it might be that there are so many old people in relation, like the ratio between older people and younger people is off, will be off. It's already starting to be off, but it will be more and more off in Germany in the next 20 years. So yeah, the system is a little bit broken because uh, their uh, generation didn't or stop to get the same amount of children like the generation before, which means we have to face the consequences. Facing the consequences, realistically, sitting down and looking what actions do I take, have I taken, and where do they lead me. And that doesn't make life any easier, and it's not about that, but that makes life more clear facing reality and of course there's a lot of society things here about yeah some people from how they grew up and the uh, uh, social environment and the possibilities of education brought them to a different point than other people and they see this this is a very very complex topic the thing is I speak more to the individual person here. But let's face it, of course, that definitely as a society, we have to constantly look how can we make sure things are not falling through the cracks or actually people are not falling through the cracks. And you see that especially in the bigger cities where there's huge problems here in Berlin just when you go into the city center in certain districts, already the garbage, the amount of garbage that you see on the street, it directly shows you something is very wrong. And something is wrong to an extent that not an individual can solve, like not an individual can collect all this garbage. Yeah, We have to stop throwing garbage on the street and we have to start picking it up but we lean here onto the garbage men. We lean on the street cleaners. Yeah, we lean on all these institutions that are there. And this can 
create some numbing, some numbing, some sluggishness, the schlendrian, to use a German word. And in a sense, it's a forced sluggishness or so. You know, recently there was a little bit of a storm here and then a tree fell onto a path uh, leading towards a forest here. So I went there in the morning and I saw that, yeah, the trees over the path and for me it was no problem to go past, but I thought, okay, someone needs to put this away because it cannot stay like that. There are children passing here or uh, older people and so on. So I went back home, I took my saw and I cut this tree off the path, you know, but with the knowledge of, I'm not sure if that's allowed what I'm doing here. I'm not sure it's responsible. So it was early in the morning, no one was there, I just did it. But it was an unclear situation. Yeah, we live in this very complex society where it's actually pretty unclear. Can you take responsibility or do you have to go first to this office and this office and so on? The pure vastness. And now, unfortunately, it sounds a bit political, but I said I didn't want to. I don't want to become political here. I want to have it very open. But the pure vastness of or this gigantic machine that we are all part of, that is called a state or society, suddenly brings us in to this place where 200 meters away from where you live, there's something to take care of, but we wait for the professionals to take care of it. But the thing is, the professionals might never come. And the whole thing that I'm talking about here reminds me of the tragedy of the commons. So this thought play where you explore how does it work if there is a common ground, something that can be used by everyone, and if there is the private ground. yeah, And something like the health insurance comes to mind because from the health insurance without punishment, you can take out a lot yeah, through bad lifestyle and someone was replying to me and I found this quite an interesting reply after I wrote this newsletter he told me that his parents who uh, are both doctors and having a, a praxis they said I'm not sure anymore which number 80% or something like this 80% of the people that are there coming to the praxis are not sick and in a sense it's also good no rather go to the doctor one time too much than too little is also in a sense responsible but on the other hand is also a question how much are we using this commons yeah these things that we can all use and how much are we using them difficult questions what does it do with you to face the consequences of what you're doing to imagine there are no safety nets. In some of the responses that I got to my newsletter, there was a certain distrust uh, of individuality or of the choices of the individual person. And I can really understand this distrust. I always think about it when I'm on the German Autobahn. So yeah, I think everyone knows that there are parts of the German Autobahn. It's not everywhere. There's parts of the German Autobahn where there's no speed limit. You could, in a sense, go as fast as you want. Uh, obviously, in reality, that's not how it works. That there is no speed limit doesn't mean you can just <laughs> go as fast as you want. It means the people there in the cars need to organize themselves well when it comes to how fast uh, you drive and since going faster means higher risk there's obviously ethically no duty to go fast unfortunately some people don't really understand this and they think it's their right to go fast and then they actually create a lot of violence and 
pressure on the other people of the autobahn and i uh, have said before i'm not sure if here openly or talking with other people that i feel i had a lot of violent encounters sometimes after driving there and that's less in other countries it's less in Belgium, where you can go 120, or France, where you can go 130, or Sweden, where you can go only 110. There is a difference between being allowed to do something and having a right. It's not your right on the German Autobahn to go fast. You are allowed to do it, but you are ethically, obviously, only allowed to do it because it's a risky thing when you don't put other people at risk. And if other people decide to go slow because they don't want to take the risk, you have to accept that. So I always think that that's sort of an interesting experiment that is happening here yeah, with this autobahn where there's no restriction on the speed. And unfortunately, it doesn't work as well as it could be. Let's ignore all the uh, things about environmental concerns and so on and so forth but just let's go to how people are organizing themselves there on the autobahn in the with the speed that they are driving and there are some very responsible people that use this very responsible yeah like people that want to go fast or go fast but they only do it when it's really okay like when it doesn't disturb anyone else but unfortunately the people that are not behaving like this are in a sense destroying it for everyone else And here's the thing, freedom can be only achieved by self-responsible people. And I mean freedom in a society, a society where we don't put violence on each other, which is a complete different society from what we live in, because we live actually in very, very violent societies with lots of clear rules and lots of things that you can go to prison with that have nothing to do directly with creating violence onto other people, yeah, but you didn't pay for this or you didn't do that and blah, 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 blah. And we ended up in such a society because we are not self-responsible enough. We are not empathically enough realizing how do other people feel? How can we organize that well? And now we end up with, I go there cleaning the path, not sure if I'm allowed to do that. I'm going on the German autobahn thinking there should be a speed limit here for everyone. That should be 130 or something like this. Because the amount of people that cannot deal with this freedom is just too high. But, you know, on the other hand, I think, why is it like this? This, should, this is, oh, this is so terrible. This is so terrible that it's like this, that we have to have all these rules because we are too dumb to figure this all out by ourselves and in good conversation with each other, that there have to be these punishments, all this stuff. Why? Why are we all acting in this irresponsible way why is there so much garbage lying around in Sonnale in Neukölln what is happening ah. make good choices let's all make good choices so we can actually have a certain amount of freedom and not more rules and more rules and more rules and more rules and more rules, and more rules, and more rules because We are all distrusting each other instead of communicating with each other, taking care of each other, taking care of ourselves and having a good society, having a good society. And the good society starts with acting responsible, communicating with each other, but also with realizing the consequences for all of us of the actions that we are taking. Okay, that's it for today. I just remind you quickly, newsletter, Patreon page. Good. Continue.